It's the name of the Messiah. We thank God for His grace and mercy. We thank God for grace and apostleship. We thank God for being put, allowed to be put in, in, in trust with the preaching of the gospel. We thank God for authorizing us and licensing us and anointing us and empower us, empowering us to reach out to you with the gospel of Jesus Christ because God's got nothing but love for you. God is love and in him is no hatred at all. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. God is life and in him we find eternal life. There is no dying at all in Jesus. We come out to you with the gospel of Jesus Christ because we realize that it is the will of God and the desire of God for you to know what the truth really is. You know there are those who are so educated. You know there are those who are so educated to a point where they think they have it all and know it all but until you come to the knowledge of who God is, until you come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, you have not yet arrived at the truth. The truth is found in Jesus. Jesus Christ himself is the truth. And you can only find that truth in the word of God the cross of Jesus because of the blood that Jesus Christ shed on that cross that's the only place you can find the truth of God because Jesus died and rose again you see what God has done for Jesus Christ is exactly what God wants to do for you the relationship that God has with Jesus Christ is exactly the same relationship God wishes to have with you. If you're made in the image of God and you enjoy your son's company, you enjoy playing with your son or daughter, then you know that God has a son because you have a son because you were made in the image of God life will never make any sense at all until you have a relationship with God as your loving father through what Jesus Christ did on that cross your life questions will never get fully answered or answered at all until you have a relationship with God through what Jesus Christ did on the cross. You will never be assured that after your life on earth has come to an end, you will go to heaven. You will never have that assurance until you have a relationship with God through what Jesus Christ did on the cross. The only way you can ever establish a relationship with the living and the true God is by putting your faith in what Jesus did on the cross. So I plead the blood of Christ into the very foundations of this here town of Odom for mass evangelism, for the preaching of the gospel, for soul winning because it's never the will of God that any one of us should perish. God's will for us is that we should come to the knowledge of the truth. The truth is a person and this person has a name and his name 
is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ himself, himself said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. It means that if you are without Jesus, you are not on the way to heaven. If you are without Jesus Christ, you do not have the truth. And if you are without Jesus Christ, you do not have the eternal life that God so wants to you extend to every single one of us. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, and we go with that. I pray the blood and declare the blood of Jesus Christ into the very atmosphere and the heavens above all them. For the pulling down of principalities and powers. For the pulling down of those demonic strongholds holding you back from making that confession and making that commitment to the Lord Jesus. I declare the blood of Jesus Christ for the pulling down of spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places and the pulling down of demonic strongholds, the rulers of the darkness of this world. I speak the blood of Jesus Christ because in the blood of Jesus Christ is eternal life. If you can hear me, if you're within the reach of my voice, I speak and declare the blood of Jesus Christ into your spirit and soul that you might receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because without the Holy Spirit of God, you will never be able to live the life of God. I speak the blood of Jesus Christ into every house in Oldham for the peace of God to rule and reign in every home in Oldham because Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. I speak the blood of Jesus Christ to the very gates of Oldham, both the physical gates and the spiritual gates for the triumphant entry of the Son of God into this here town of Oldham. I place the blood of Jesus at the very center of the town of Oldham, both the physical center and the spiritual center, because the Lord Jesus said, when I am lifted up, I will draw many unto me. We declare the blood of Jesus Christ into the very foundations of the town of Oldham, because God's got nothing but love for you. <laughs> <laughs> because God's got nothing but love for you. No. But I want to give you something. Can I give you something? Can I give you all the words? God bless you. Thank you. God's got nothing but love for you. God loves you so much. He sent Jesus Christ to die on that cross. Jesus shed his blood for you and me. Whether you believe it or not, whether you say you're a Christian or not, whether you come from whatever, okay, thank you. God bless you. Whatever religion you come, whatever religion you come from, whatever culture you belong to, whatever community you're coming from, whatever continent you hail from, or what language you speak, the bottom line is this: Jesus died for you, and it was it was not any ordinary death that Jesus died because this is an innocent man, a man who has never sinned in his life. He died a criminal's death. He died in the place of a sinner. The word of God tells us that Jesus was made sin who knew no sin so that today we might become the righteousness of God. If you've never told this, let me tell you right now, Jesus died for you. He went to the cross as a sinless man. He went to the cross as a blameless man. He went to the cross without any sin in his life. Even Jesus Christ himself said it. He said, Satan's got nothing on me. But 
that this is the man we are told in the Gospels was crucified, was put in a grave, and then on the third day, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, and God bless you. And on the third day, Jesus was risen from the dead. So why would a man who's never sinned in his life go to the cross? Because the historical records, what we have, tells us that Jesus was tried six times. Jesus Christ went through six illegal trials and they couldn't find anything to convict him of. Is that, is that too loud? Is that too loud? An innocent man six illegal trials and they still couldn't find anything wrong or anything to blame they could find no blame they could not find any sin they could not find any blame in jesus christ jesus christ is the only person who has never violated the laws of god every other person born of a man and a woman has violated the laws of God think of any person that you think is the most upright person think of any person that you think is the most morally upright person in the world any person you want it can be a prophet it can be a priest it can be a religious leader think of any name that comes to your mind as long as that person was born of a man and a woman that person was born with the sinfulness of adam and eve but the word of god tells us that jesus christ was born of the holy spirit jesus was born of the spirit of god and that's why jesus christ did not and could not sin because the sin nature was not in him every other person was born with the sinfulness of Adam and Eve because when Adam and Eve decided to rebel against the love of God, the entire human race was in Adam and Eve. You know there are some kids who are born into poverty because their parents were poor. There are those who were born into money because their parents were rich. There are those who were born with an African surname because the parents are from Africa and the entire human race was born with the sinful nature of Adam and Eve because our first and four parents Adam and Eve sinned against God when they decided not to listen to what God had said they decided that they were not going to continue living according to this they decided they were not going to continue living their lives according to the word of God because God said to Adam and Eve any tree in the garden of Eden you're free to eat by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil the day you eat of it you will surely die and you and I know that when Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil they did not collapse that day because you see Adam and Eve after that they went on to have Cain and Abel so the question is what kind of death did they die what kind of death did Adam and Eve die? You see, when God said to Adam and Eve, the day you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you're going to die. What Adam should have done was ask for definition. Because you see, our definition of death is different to God's definition of death. When God is referring to death, is referring to total separation from him in hell. When you refer to death, you're referring to the physical body being lowered into the ground. So the entire human race was born with the sinfulness of Adam and Eve. We were all born already hostile to God. We were born already enemies in our minds by wicked works. It doesn't matter what kind of life you live. It doesn't matter into which community or culture or family you were born into. As long as you were born of a mother and a father, you were born with the sinfulness of Adam and Eve. You were all born with the sinfulness of Adam and Eve. 
the entire human race was corrupted with this sinful nature so it's impossible for a sinner to deliver another sinner from sin there's no human being there's no person on the surface of the earth who could have yo you go brother god bless you man long time no see <laughs> there's the only person who could have who could have delivered humanity or who can deliver humanity from the sinfulness of adam and eve is a person who doesn't have sin in themselves Many people have come forward claiming that they came from God, that God sent them. But as long as you're born of a man and a woman, as long as that person was born of a man and a woman, they were born with the nature of sin. So you see, you might be the nicest person on the planet, but if you've not come to the cross of Jesus Christ, as far as God is concerned, you're still a sinner. You could be the most religious person in the world. But as long as you've not been to the cross of Jesus Christ to pay the debt for your sin, you're still a sinner. You could be performing all these ritual exercises. You could be carrying out all your religious obligations. But as long as you've not been to the cross of Jesus Christ to have your, the debt of sin wiped away, as far as God is concerned, you're still a sinner. You could be that person who loves your neighbor and your neighbor's neighbor and your neighbor's neighbor's neighbor. But as long as you've not been to the cross of Jesus Christ to have your sins forgiven, as far as God is concerned, you're still a sinner. You could be doing well for your family, doing right by your family. You know, you could be the one of those that love their family to bits, and that's what a human being is supposed to do. That's the decent thing to do. But as long as you've not been to the cross of Jesus Christ to have the debt of sin wiped away, you're still a sinner. The word of God tells us that the entire human race was affected and infected with the sin of Adam and Eve. And this is exactly where we see sexual immorality today. That comes from Adam and Eve. This is you see, the reason why you see unforgiveness today. Is the nature of sin from Adam and Eve. This is why you see unforgiveness and bitterness. This is why you see families falling apart. This is why you see people hating each other. This is why you see violence and aggression in the world. You turn on the news and there's a different teenager being stabbed to death every single day. How did that come about? That is because of the sinfulness of Adam and Eve. You hear of one nation going to war with another nation for no reason, without provocation. Where do you think that came from? All of that came from the sinfulness of Adam and Eve. I say this because people ask this question all the time. Why is there suffering in the world? Why is there evil in the world? Why is it that there are murderers? Why is it that people commit murder? People commit all kinds of atrocities against each other. The answer is found in the book of Genesis. Because in the book of Genesis, we see the human being deforming himself from being God-focused to selfish and self-centeredness. Every evil thing that happens in the world today is because of selfishness. It's because humanity decided to be self-centered instead of God-centered. Because when God made man, he said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. It means that God made us so that we can reflect who he is. All right, so he's a guy in your chair too then. So when you decided to, when Adam and Eve decided to rebel against the love of God, 
they forsook the image of God and the likeness of God and sin came into the world and death by sin. It doesn't matter how you want to argue it or debate it. It doesn't matter how you want to reason yourself out of it. The bottom line is that we were all born sinners and Jesus Christ came to die on the cross so we can be forgiven and reconciled to God because there are two doors before us. Whenever your life comes to an end, you will find yourself either in heaven or in hell. Whether you believe the gospel or not. It's like a criminal who says, I don't believe in jail. Whether you don't believe in jail or not, if you commit crime, they will come grab you and they will lock you up. Whether you believe in jail or not. So you see, Christ came. He shed his blood on the cross. And I'm telling you this because, you know, you have to confess the Lord Jesus. You have to take the mind of Christ. You have to leave the, think, the old man's thinking. The reason why we are in a predicament today is because of the thinking of Adam and Eve. They are reasoning the way they reasoned. That's what got humanity where it is today. Because God said very clearly, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, don't eat it, the day you eat of it, you will surely die. So they had the knowledge, but they willfully, they willfully decided to go against the word of God. And you might be that Adam this afternoon who's been willfully going against the word of God. You've been going against the call of God. God's been calling you. And you know that God's been calling you because you hear him. You hear his voice in your heart. You know that God's been calling you because you feel the conviction in your heart. And you know for certain and for sure that God is speaking to you and God is calling you. And if you're one of those people who decided to go against the word of God, just like how Adam and Eve decided to go against the word of God, you can come to the Lord in repentance and in humility, and you can confess the Lord Jesus, you can have your sins washed away, you can have yourself washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. It's easy for, to tell you whether you're going to heaven or hell. You know how you know where you're going? Just check you if you have the guilt of sin in you. If you have the guilt of sin in you, the fear of death and the fear of hell, that those are not emotions and feelings and thoughts that come from heaven. It means you yourself know that you are guilty before God. The reason why people feel the guilt of sin is because they know that they are guilty before God. The reason why people try to do religion, the reason why people carry out all these religious exercises is because they know that they are guilty before God. If you were not guilty before God, why the religious exercises? If you were not guilty before God, why do you try to do all these things to appease God, to try and get right with God? The reason why people do all of these things is because they're trying to get right with God, and that's because they know that they are not right with God. But the only way you can ever get right with God is by the blood of Jesus Christ. Because whatever good works or whatever good deeds or whatever good things you do before God, as long as you are doing those things as a sinner, those according to God are being carried out by a sinner. You could be starving to death, right? And the person that you you know that this place this person hates you. They could bring you a, a sandwich and you wouldn't accept it, even though you're hungry. You would not accept it because you know it's coming from an enemy. So when Adam and Eve decided to become enemies of God by rebelling against God and they were being kicked out of the Garden of Eden. It doesn't matter what Adam and Eve will do. As long as they are doing whatever they are doing, not being reconciled to God, they are still enemies in their mind by wicked works. So one person could say to me, you know, I give, I give to charity, you know. I give to Oxford and I give to, um, to the Samaritans. I'm a good person, me. I do good deeds and I give to charity. But you will give it to charity as a sinner. The only thing that can remove sin from your life is the blood of Jesus. There is no amount of soap that will wash away your sin. 
the only thing that can wash away sin is the blood of Jesus Christ. You and I know this because no matter how many religious exercises you carry, no matter how many good deeds you do, you still feel the guilt of sin. Have you ever noticed that no matter how much good you try and do, no matter how much you try to be a good person, you still feel the guilt of sin? Have you ever noticed that? It's because the only thing that can wash away your sin is the blood of Jesus. You can come before the Lord, you can come before God, and you can say, Father, forgive my sins, especially the sin of unbelief. Forgive my sins. I believe in my heart and I confess that Jesus is the Son of God who came to die for me so that I can be forgiven, so that, so that I can be reconciled back to you. The moment you do that, your life will never be the same because the guilt of sin will be lifted off from off your shoulder. This is the reason why people want to keep their minds occupied with drugs and drinks and as many sexual partners one can fit in a day. It's because our minds are, and our conscience is telling us that we are sinners. We can't bear to listen to our conscience, to the voice of the inner man so much that we try to stifle the voice of the inner man by drink, by spliff, by a sniff, by smoke, by as many uh, women or men we can get in our lives. All these things that, this, that, that people are doing is because humanity is trying the best it can to stifle the voice of the inner man. Your conscience tells you that you're a sinner, you need to get right with God, you need a savior. And what do you do? You go and drink because you don't want to think about that. Your conscience is telling you that there's no amount of religious activities that you could ever do to wash away your sin. And what do you do? You add more religion upon religion upon religion because you can't bear to listen to your conscience telling you you need to get right with God by the blood of Jesus Christ. God's got nothing but love for you. The gospel we're preaching is not a gospel of hate, but it's a gospel of love. Because God, as a loving Father, wants you to come back home. I mean, you, you're, you're a parent. You can relate to this. As soon as it gets to 8 o'clock, you start thinking, where is that kid? I told him, be home by 7. And it's 8 o'clock and he's not home yet. You start to get worried. You start to get concerned. Because you know that it's not safe on the streets. You know that. So you get on your phone ah, ah, and you call your kid and you say to him, come back home. That's exactly what God did with Jesus Christ. After Jesus Christ had died for your sins, after Jesus was put in that grave, after Jesus was risen from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God tells us that Jesus showed himself to the people for a good 40 days after which Jesus was physically ascended into heaven. He went into heaven and he went and sat at the right hand of God. He did that on your behalf. If anybody's ever told you that God's God, God doesn't want anything to do with you, they lie to you because God is calling you home. Jesus went home. Jesus was lifted up into heaven. Jesus went into heaven and went and sat at the right hand of God because that's where God wants you. Did you know that when Jesus went up into heaven, he went into heaven on your behalf? The day Jesus Christ went up into heaven, 
the doors of heaven were open for man to go the same way. You see, this is why I prefer to follow Jesus. Because if you follow Jesus Christ, you will end up exactly where Jesus Christ ended. That's in heaven. But if you follow any other man, you will find yourself in the very same predicament. You will find yourself in the pit of hell. And you do not want to go there. Because whoever goes into hell never comes out. Because hell is a place of torture and torment. Because hell is not an idea or symbolism. Hell is an actual place with real people in real time. It's not an easy message to preach. Well, it's an easy message to preach for us because we have to. But it's not an easy message for some people to receive. But at the end of the day, God's got nothing but love for you. God loves you so much. That's why he's bringing out evangelists and preachers to warn you of the dangers of hell. never the will of God for humanity to go to hell and I know that sometimes I know that sometimes when we're angered by people we use these words and we say to people we're angry against oh God or hell You've heard that before but if you knew exactly what happens in hell you wouldn't say that not even to your worst enemy you would never say that instead of going down into the pit of hell God's desire for you is so that you can come and sit with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that's God's design and will for you The ascension of Jesus Christ into heaven is God calling his children back home. The phone is ringing. It's your father calling. He's calling you home. Will you come home? Will you decide to follow the Lord Jesus? Will you decide to make a commitment to follow the Lord Jesus? Because if you follow a man, you will end up where man goes. God has already said to Adam and to everybody who is born from Adam, God has already said, if you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will surely die. And as you know, when Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and when they did that, they died a spiritual death instantly, while they were dying a physical death gradually. In the privacy of your home, in the comfort of your home, you can go before God and you can say, forgive my sins, wash my sins. The only thing that can take away the guilt of sin is the blood of Jesus. There's no amount of religion, there's no amount of religion that you can do that can take away the guilt of sin. The only thing that can take away the guilt of sin is the blood of Jesus. Oh, you could do all the religion in the world if you want. Oh, you could give all the millions you have to charity if you want. But the only thing that can take away the guilt of sin is the blood of Jesus. The only way you can come into God's presence is by first addressing the issue of sin. And by the issue of sin, we mean the sinfulness inherited from our four parents, Adam and Eve. Or you can come before God and God will forgive you. You can come before God and God can wipe the slate clean. You can come before God and God will open the doors of his house for you to enter in reconciliation. Make a decision but make the right decision. Follow Jesus. Because if you follow man, 
if you follow anybody who was born of a man and a woman, if you follow any of the children of Adam, you will end up the same way that the man ended up. When people die, you see them go down into the grave. Why would you want to follow anybody who's gone down into the grave? I find it interesting that people will put their faith in a person who's died and never actually came up out of the grave. Why would you want to put your trust in somebody and expect that person to deliver you and protect you from death, the death that they couldn't protect themselves from? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you go. Why would you want to do that? I find it so interesting that humanity and people will put our trust. Shalom, shalom. God bless you. I find it so interesting. We'll put our trust in a person who was never able to deliver themselves from that death in the first place. the name of the son of God I find it so interesting that there are those who put their faith and they trust a person who's died to deliver them and protect them from death but the person couldn't deliver themselves from death so what makes you think that they can protect you from the grave that they could not defeat. But Jesus conquered the grave. Jesus put death to embarrassment. Jesus totally annihilated the power of the grave. And he went up into heaven. He went and sat at the right hand of God. And you also can be received into God's presence today also can be accepted into God's presence today come and claim your acceptance come and claim your invitation come and claim your place in God's house because you have a place in God's house Do you know what God will do for you the moment you come into fellowship with him? The moment you come into that relationship with him again? Do you know what God's going to do for you? God's going to put his Holy Spirit in your heart. That's what God does for you. The day you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the day you come to faith in Christ Jesus, the day you confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died for our sins so that we can be forgiven and reconciled to God, the day you believe that, God will place his Holy Spirit in your life. Do you want to know what the answer to depression is? It's the Holy Spirit of God. Do you think that the God who created the heavens, the sea, the earth and everything in it, by the word of his mouth, through the agency of the Holy Spirit, do you think that that God cannot defeat a simple demon spirit of depression? Do you want to know what the answer to anxiety attack is? For those who go through anxiety attacks, it's the Holy Spirit of God. Just allow him to put the Holy Spirit in your life and see what difference it makes. never live the life that God has for you without the Spirit of God in you. A child will never be called your child unless they have your DNA in them, right? It is the same thing with God. Jesus has already said that whosoever does not have the Spirit of God in them doesn't belong to God. If you say that you're
you're a child of God. Tell me how you're related to God if you don't have the Spirit of God in you. If you say that you belong to the family of God, how can you belong to the family of God without the Spirit of God in you? What is it that you have in common with Him? Because we know that human families share DNA. That's what makes people family. So what makes you and God family? If I say to you, are you a child of God? You probably say, yes, I'm a child of God. So my question to you is, what makes you a child of God? What is it about God that's in you? What do you have in common with him? How are you relatives if you don't have the spirit of God in you? You will never live the life of God without the spirit of God. And it's important for you to live the life that God has for you because there is a day called the day of judgment and on this day Jesus will judge with righteous judgment. After Jesus had opened, um, there was a man who was born blind. Jesus opened his eyes. They, con they confronted him and they were harassing him before because of that. And one of the things that Jesus Christ said was that all judgment has been committed to him. The day your life comes to an end, before they lower the body into the ground, you will find yourself before the judgment seat of God. And as you lift up your eyes to look at the one who is passing the judgment, that Jesus whom you are rejecting is the one you're going to find on that day passing judgment. That Jesus whom you denied that he's not the son of God when he is, the very son Jesus is the one you will see on the day of judgment passing judgment. Jesus died and rose again. He's been to the afterlife and back. So he is the one man you need to listen to when it comes to matters of eternity. The day your life comes to an end, you're going to find yourself before the judgment seat of God. And on the judgment seat of God, you will see Christ sitting on that throne. And you are going to receive your judgment. You're going to receive your judgment. You're going to receive judgment for the adulteries, you are going to receive judgment for man abusing himself with mankind. You are going to receive judgment for the lies. You are going to receive judgment for mockeries. You are going to receive judgment for blasphemies. You are going to receive judgment for calling God a liar. Because when Jesus was baptized, the heavens were opened. The Spirit of God descended like a dove and lighted on Jesus and a voice was heard from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased so when you deny that Jesus is not the son of God you are making God a liar and on the day of judgment you will receive your judgment for that when Jesus was crucified as soon as they lifted up the cross you hear Jesus saying father forgive them they don't know what they do and you and I know very well that he wasn't talking about Joseph. Jesus was calling God his father as he was hanging on the cross. So when you deny that Jesus is not the son of God, on the day of judgment, you are going to receive judgment for that. Before they put the body into the ground, your soul will come before God in judgment. And how you know how the day of judgment is going to turn out for you? Just check your guilt of sin. Do you have the guilt of sin? Do you have the fear of death and the fear of hell? Do you still feel condemned when you think about God and eternal life? When you think about God and eternal life, do you 
you shout hallelujah i know that when i'm done on earth i'm going to heaven or when you think about god and heaven and eternity are you scared does it sober you up does it shake you a little if you still feel the guilt of sin it means the day you stand before god you're going to stand before god as a guilty man but if you come to the cross of jesus christ the cross of jesus christ the blood of jesus will wash away your sin god will set you free from the guilt of sin he will set you free from the fear of death and the fear of hell you can have a relationship with god as your loving father through what jesus did on that cross there's no amount of religion that will wash away sin only the blood of jesus christ can wash away sin there's no amount of good deeds or good works that can wash away sin only the blood of jesus christ wash away sin there's no amount of being a nice person that will wash away sin only the blood of jesus can wash away sin and you see i know that when we say this people have different opinions but just listen to your conscience do you feel the guilt of sin or not if you're still feeling the guilt of sin then you know that on the day of judgment you're going to stand before god as a guilty man but we bring the gospel of jesus to you and we pray that you will make the right choice and the right choice is the cross of jesus christ we pray that you make the right choice and the right choice is the blood of jesus there's no amount of soap there's no amount of soap that will wash away sin nothing will wash away the guilt of sin but the blood of jesus and so we plead the blood of the lamb we plead the blood of jesus christ into the very foundations of the town of Oldham for soul winning for the preaching of the gospel because it's not the will of god that any should perish but that we should all come to the saving knowledge of who jesus is i plead the blood of jesus into the heavens and the atmosphere above Oldham for the pulling down of principalities and powers and those demonic strongholds holding you back from entering into the kingdom of god for the pulling down of spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places for the pulling down of the rulers of the darkness of this age i declare the blood of jesus how are you you're all right don't tell me see <laughs> i plead the blood of jesus the blood of jesus christ to the very gates of Oldham, both the physical gates and the spiritual gates for the triumphant entry of the son of god into this year town of Oldham. if you're within the reach of my voice if you can hear me i speak and i declare and i plead the blood of jesus christ into your soul and spirit for the gift of the spirit of god for the receiving of the gift of the spirit before jesus went up to heaven he said one thing he said it's expedient for me to go because when i am gone then i will send you the gift of the holy spirit i speak the blood of jesus christ into every house in order for the peace of god to rule and reign in every home in order in jesus name amen and amen praise the lord